I don't tell people this ever, but I'm going to tell you because his name tastes like mayonnaise and I hate mayonnaise and I'm excited I don't have to say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> how's, your, how's your husband taste? <laughs> Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanigato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Today, we're speaking to a woman who can taste words. Yes, you heard that correctly. She can taste words. She has a form of synesthesia called lexical gustatory synesthesia. And I'm going to let her give the definition so I don't have to say those words again. Uh, but we've got her on the line. And thank you so much for being on today. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, of course. So do you just want to kick this off with what is synesthesia in general? And then what exactly is the form that you experience? Sure. So the actual definition of synesthesia is the production of a sense impression relating to one sense or part of the body by stimulation of another sense or part of the body, which is such a mouthful. So um, the way that I've tried to explain it to people is just it's like a wire gets crossed between your senses and it can occur with any senses. Um, the one that I think people hear about more commonly is when people hear sounds and then they see colors in front of their eyes. And actually, I've heard about that happening with a guy that eats food and then sees color patterns in front of his eyes and he'll eat weird combinations of food because it makes a pretty color, color pattern. Um, so that's basically what synesthesia is. And again, like if people have heard of it, um, it, a lot of times it's one of the ones with hearing, like you hear something and then you see a corresponding thing. Which we did, um, um, sorry to interrupt, but we did way back, I think before the show was even on YouTube, one of our very first seasons. And we did speak to someone with synesthesia who it was that it was seeing colors based on sound. So like seeing sounds. And yeah. when we put that out, it blew people's minds. So I think in general, even people hearing this, it's going to be a shock to them that there's people out there who are experiencing this because it's so unimaginable to like ex think of what experiencing these senses would be. Um, so really interested to hear about yours specifically. Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, so um, it is, it's interesting. I feel like for most people, when they hear about synesthesia, it's either what you just said, like just mind blowing, or it's like, oh my God, that's what this is. That's what the thing I've been experiencing is, which is what it was for me. Um, actually, not even at first. I didn't even realize it at first because I didn't learn about this specific type. So lexical gustatory synesthesia, sorry, did you want me to do the definition for that? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, so lexical gustatory synesthesia, lexical is like the Latin for words, gustatory is taste, and then synesthesia. So I just say LGS and that's, you guys can do that for this episode too, because it's a mouthful for me as well. Um, but basically there's a couple different ways that this specific synesthesia can work, but you, each word that you speak. And for me, I speak two languages fluently and a couple others like marginally. My husband's family is from Laos originally, so I can speak a little bit of Laotian. Um, and then I was raised Catholic, so I know some Latin and Italian in that context. Um, and for me, it's every, like in any language, when I speak words, there's a corresponding flavor. Um, for me, it's about 50-50 where when I'm talking, I taste things. And also when I'm eating, I like, for example, if I hear a word over and over, I might start craving that food um, mm. that corresponds with it. Like the biggest example I remember of this was actually in the same AP psych class in high school where I learned about synesthesia, but it was before that. And we did this uh, unit on sleep and we were talking about sleep all the time. And it was making me crave um, angel hair pasta, which is butter because that's the flavor for sleep. And so I like had to make some because I was like, I don't know. Um, so... <clears throat> For me, it's about 50-50. For some people, it's more of just when they're talking, they taste words, and it's less the other way around, like less that they'll make a meal um, and be like, you know, because I was craving these words or whatever. Hmm. But so that's what it is for me. Um, and yeah, pretty much every word has a corresponding flavor. And interestingly, and this is kind of from other people with lexical gustatory synesthesia that I've talked to, who I've mostly connected with online, like just in recent years, and I'm 29 um, and this has been a thing since I can remember. Um, but it's kind of a general consensus. Usually food words taste like the food. And for me, that actually extends a little bit further. So sometimes, and this is another reason why I didn't tell people about it for a long time, because I was like, this is going to sound like I'm making this up. Because if I say that like the word strip 
tastes like chicken strips, it's like, okay, that's just like, that just sounds like something made up. Sure. But once I found out that like, for most people, chicken tastes like chicken, I was like, okay, I mean, it's, it's in your brain. It's just an associational thing. And not every word is like that. Most words actually are completely random. Like the flavor has no correlation to the word. Do you Um, remember some of the earliest words? Because I imagine, I guess to bring this back to when you first started discovering that not everyone is experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. So it's weird, if, like not weird, but it must have been strange for you to kind of realize that it was just happening to you. But do you remember some of the early words or flavors or things that really stood out to you when you like I first do. started experiencing this? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, just in general, I have a very, very good memory. Um, I actually used to say, have you ever heard of, um, I'm not going to say this right because it's like hyperthymasia. It's basically like almost like a photographic memory, but not quite. I used to say that I was that, but I did some more research into it. And I don't think that I am because it's like super rare. And I think that I would be smarter and more successful if I actually had that good of a memory. Um, But I do, I have a very good memory, like better than anyone I've ever met. Like just as a quick example, my dad is one of 11 kids and one of those kids died at birth, but the other ones all grew up, got married, had kids. We have 80 plus people in our family and we're all very close. We're, you know, big Irish, Italian, Catholic family. Um, and I can tell you every single person's birthday. Um, and so people like they'll, my family will quiz me and stuff. And I've proven that I have a better memory than anyone that I know. So that might tie into it, but I do remember the very first time that I realized this was not normal. (laughs) And it's when I want to say I was four, um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I know that it was in my parents' current house, which is where we moved when I was four. And it was a red bell pepper and it tasted like the word respect. And I told my mom that, and I'm very close to my parents. My parents are amazing. I don't want to give the impression that they're not, but the look that she gave me, I didn't mention it again for more than 10 years. (laughs) So does the Um, word respect still taste like bell peppers? Red bell peppers. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. But you did the opposite. You ate a bell pepper and told your mom that it tastes like the word respect. Yeah, because I think um, it was more because with when you're tasting words, when you're speaking, that happens so much that I think I didn't, I don't know, I didn't really think much of that because it was happening all the time. But then when you eat a food, like obviously I'm not eating pieces of bell pepper all the time. So when you eat a food, it's, I don't know, it's more of like an isolated thing. Obviously you eat a lot too, but I talk a lot more than I eat. And so I just, I don't know, I had never... And I guess I probably didn't have the words to articulate it the other way around either. Yeah. So what is happening like, when you're not, saying, like right now, you're like saying a bunch of stuff, like what is going on inside of your mouth right now? So see, this is where like for me, I it's almost like I can tune it out at mm. this point. So I do still, if we took a transcript of everything I'm saying right now and we looked at the words, like I can tell you what that tasted like, but I talk fast and also feel free to tell me to slow down if you need to, because I know that I talk too fast, but... Um, you just want to get all the flavors in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And honestly, it's just, it just goes so fast. And it's like, yes, I do taste them, but that's why for me, it's more of the other way around. So like, and when I read, it also is a much stronger flavor than oh. when I talk. So I do, but like it kind of, when you're talking, there's just so many different things. It goes so fast. It's almost like, I don't even know how to explain it. You know how, have you ever seen those things about LaCroix where people say like, oh, you know, it's like someone bottled this sparkling water in a room next to a strawberry plant or something because it's like such a light flavor. It's almost like that. Mm. Like it's very, like it's just like there's passing through. And you're so used Um, to it by now, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what's like your favorite word? (laughs) So I have a few. Um, (laughs) The And it's, it's interesting because my favorite foods have more corresponding words, but I'm not really sure. So like the word why, W-H-Y, Uh, Because homophones are not, not that there's more than one Y. I don't know why I use that example, but homophones don't always have the same flavor. But the word Y tastes like a totally like fresh mango. And I like mangoes. So Mm. that's a good one. Love that one. Um, The word question tastes like Dr. Pepper. Also really like that. And I actually don't drink that much Dr. Pepper. Um, But I I like it and it just tastes good. And then (laughs) I have these drinks. I actually have them with me right now. Um, So I live in Alaska. I think I mentioned that before. Um, like in the email or whatever, but up here we have more little coffee shacks per capita than anywhere else in the world. I don't know why. Um, but we have these things and I think they do have them in other places. Like they probably have them in New York somewhere, but they're called like Red Bull Italian sodas essentially. 
Um, and I like those and there's, I get a specific one and it's Red Bull with a little bit of cream and cherry cantaloupe and grapefruit flavor syrups in it. And that one tastes like a lot, like the word work, W-O-R-K. Hmm. Um, it tastes for some reason, like that's just like one of my favorites. And so I get this drink all the time because it tastes like that. Did you always like get this sensation or did it start happening at a certain age? Um, no, I mean, I think always, I, I guess probably when I learned to talk, um, and I'm very, that's another thing too. Like I'm very linguistically inclined and I've always, you know, whenever we would do those tests and stuff, like what, you know, what is your brain geared towards spatial awareness or words? Um, that's all. And I'm a writer. I published my first book last year and I just, I've actually been telling stories since I could speak. Like I would tell my mom bedtime stories before we would go to bed and she actually wrote some of them down, which is so sweet. Um, but I think that that's correlated. And actually someone else I've met in on TikTok who has lexical gustatory synesthesia as well, she made a comment that it seems like a lot of people who have it end up going into a career where um, they can kind of like use it. So for her, she owns a tea house and she makes teas that correspond to different like titles of books and movies and stuff so that other people can taste what she experiences when she says these things uh, because obviously like me and her we don't have the same words for the same foods yeah huh interesting but yeah so i guess probably since i could talk and how strong is the sensation or do you remember when you were younger like is it is it very faint or in some cases is it as if you are biting into a mango or drinking a Dr. Pepper when you say or think about a certain word. Yeah, no. So with some words, it is that much. Like it is wow. very strong. And obviously I don't, um, like I don't feel it, right? I don't feel like cold liquid in my mouth going down my throat. Um, but there's also, there's also some words that um, it's very faint. And also some where it's almost as if it's not even a flavor, but it's like where, you know, if you smell something really strong, like a, like pine salt is a good example, like mm -hmm. a cleaning product. And it's like, it's maybe smells good, but it's such a strong smell. It's almost like you taste it, but also it's not a strong flavor. Right. It's like, so mm -hmm. some things are like that. Do you get like it also in your nose or is it in like on your tongue that you're tasting this or like in your throat? So usually on my tongue, but there are some that are like that where it's, it's more of almost like a strong smell. I mean, I think it's still a flavor. It's just a light flavor. Um, right. And, and it, also kind of, yeah. I was going to say, are there any words that are like fucking horrible? <laughs> um, yes, actually. So, well, yes and no. I, I do have some words that don't taste like food, that taste kind of like plastic. However, I don't have any that taste like shit. Or anything like that. So there's there was this other guy that I connected with on the internet who has this. And he was saying um, that the name Philip tasted like literal shit. And I don't have anything <laughs> like that. Okay. Um, but I do. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe he eats shit. And that's why he knows. But I, I feel like it has to be something that you have eaten or like could really picture the flavor of at least. Um, but I do have words that taste like foods I don't like. And so I, like I said, I mentioned this to my mom when I was little and then I, I realized like, this is not a normal thing. So I didn't mention it again. Um, and then so I why, why was that friend, exactly? Were you sort of ashamed or confused at your mom's reaction? And then you just kept it to yourself all that time? Yeah, it was kind of just like, I thought something was wrong with me. Um, but I also, so like, I thought like something's wrong with me to the extent, like we don't talk, like I shouldn't talk about this because this is not something everybody else is experiencing, but I also was like, this is not hurting me. So it's not like it preoccupied a ton of my time. It was just like one of those things. Like, I don't know. I just didn't, I, I just didn't tell people. And, but then, so I told my boyfriend, now husband, and we, I've known him my whole life. So I knew him very well. So I told him just cause I was like comfortable with him. But actually the next time that I told someone was when I was 18 and my best friend, she had just gotten dumped by her boyfriend and she was really, really upset, like inconsolable. And so I told her and I was like, look, I don't tell people this ever, but I'm going to tell you because his name tastes like mayonnaise and I hate mayonnaise yeah. and I'm excited. I don't have to say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> how's your, how's your husband taste? Um, good. So my husband actually has a really unique name. His name's Banky. Banky? Um, Banky? Yeah. Like that's uh, his full government name. No, his full government name is Sakarin Bank. 
Wait, what? <laughs> what? Is he the king of like a small island nation or that, so? That's wild. That sounds like a mountain range. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's, it's actually funny. He got me a cameo from Frank for Christmas and Frank was like, Banky is like Frankie, but cuter. <laughs> <laughs> but he, so his parents are from Thailand and Laos. Uh, so his last name is Thai and then his first and middle names. So he goes by his middle name, but like, you know, the like Banky instead of Bank. Wow. Um, and I think his name, it technically means like mountains of money. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay. But yeah, so his name, it's interesting. It tastes like if I ate a marshmallow in like a room where like bacon was cooking. That's fucking great. That's, yeah. Wow. You picked a winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, well, and actually huh. our last name, it's so funny. I texted my mom last night because obviously like I changed my name recently. We actually just got married in September, even though we've been together for a million years. Congrats. Um, thank you. <laughs> but so I, uh. I changed my name and I texted my mom last night because I was like, oh, you know, maybe they'll ask me what my name tastes like and stuff. And because uh, I remembered it's a certain type of squash and I didn't remember what the squash mm. was. It's acorn, acorn squash. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was like, what is a squash? Seasonal, <laughs> um, though. But that's what <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, so um, no, so it's good. He has a good name. Um, it is interesting, though, because it is like a unique name. So is there so if, what if someone like made up a word essentially like is it just like any sort of sound stubble gobber yeah like can something like that uh elicit a flavor or is it just words like actual words um, so one sometimes sometimes i'll hear something completely new and it doesn't really have a strong flavor typically so actually like the last name santagato is a good example of this um it kind of ends up fitting into words that sound like that so like santagato kind of tastes like santa and then um oh. like god kind of so it's sort of like it and it's it's usually a lighter flavor when it's something like that that's like mixed together got it um and also with words like that or like well not i guess like onomatopoeias don't really have flavors usually but um when it's something like that it. Uh, that's also where it's more likely to be something that's not actually food <laughs> that's like tastes like plastic or paper mm, or something. Yeah. So like it's not sounds, it's it's words. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, and like, I, yeah. So with sounds, it's kind of like usually tastes like whatever the closest word is or just not a strong flavor at all. But you'll experience the same thing reading a word as speaking it or hearing it. Yes, it's actually stronger with reading. I don't know why. Wow. Um, I guess it makes sense, actually, you know, like when people like see movies and stuff, they're like, oh, the book was so much better because it's like you, the, the imagery that your your brain is like the way creating. you're consuming the word. Yeah, it's like, like it's, it, I, I guess that, that like makes sense to me. When you said that earlier, like I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and it's kind of like you can focus on it more too, right? Like you can, um, when people are speaking, you know, sometimes it's going so fast that it's just kind of, yeah. So, uh, it's, it's not something you can just stop and be like, what, you know, you can't read it or you can't repeat it unless you're watching TV or something, but you can't just like rewind and have them re say it. But with words in a book, you know, you can kind of go over it, go slower. Yeah. yeah. This, this is probably, I don't know if this is like a weird question or whatever, but if, if you're eating something and someone's talking to you, could that, and I know it's like faint or whatever, but could it possibly like fuck with the flavor of the thing that you're eating that you're like, oh, all of a sudden I'm tasting, I'm eating chicken and I taste a fucking strawberry. Yes. Oh my gosh. It, yes. And it's like, I feel kind of, well, so it, I guess it's more, if I'm like not expecting it, it's almost it's like it's worse. Like if I'm sitting at home and I'm like eating and then my husband gets home and starts talking to me, it can like mess it up. But if it's like I'm out to dinner with people and I'm like, I, I don't know. It's almost like having the time to like mentally prepare for like, that's the activity. It fucks with it less. Mm -hmm. But when, but that is like, sometimes when I, um, this, this sounds so dumb, but when I like am eating by myself, I'll like make up a little story in my head, like using the words from like whatever foods I'm eating. I was going like, to ask it that. Yeah, I, like, I would do that. Like, have you ever like eaten a complete sentence? Like, oh yeah, things no, that, I, I you do know? that. No, and I, like I said, I'm a writer and, um, I, so obviously with my like published works and like books that I'm trying to publish and everything, they're not like completely based on this. Although I do, I think that it plays into it, you know, like words that taste good, but I will literally write little short stories or like a paragraph just <laughs> with the words that I'm eating because I'm like, cause then I can read over it and it just like makes it taste better. It's so, I can't even think of 
That is insane. Yeah. Up. I would it's I would so weird. I would just like find the word that tastes like maple syrup and just like say that. I mean eat, eat healthy shit and then just like cover it in like sugary words. Yeah. <laughs> See, and like some some people with this, they say that they can do that. That does not work for me. Like I I mean it works a little bit, but it's like it's not the same as actually eating it, you know? And like right, I said, yeah. it almost kind of backfires like with the sleep thing where I'm like no, I want to actually eat it because I'm like having the flavor of it, but it's like, you're not swallowing it. You're not actually eating it. Um, and so it kind of like makes you want to have the actual thing more. I have to tell you guys about a game changing product that I use before a night out with drinks and it's called Z biotics. Z biotics pre alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. I'm going to give you three steps on how to use this. Step one, you make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Step two, of course, drink responsibly, pace yourself, hydrate, get a good night's sleep. And step three, you get to enjoy the next day. You'll wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. That's why I use Z-Biotics and make it my first drink before I go out for a night with drinks. And it was actually invented by PhD scientists to help tackle those rough mornings after a night of drinking. Here's the scientific way it works in the simplest terms possible. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. And it's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for that rough next day. So what Zbiotics does, it produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. And that's why you're able to wake up feeling refreshed. I've been using this. If you guys are keeping up with all the things that we're doing here at San Agato Studios, we've actually been on tour for the other podcasts, The Basement Yard. Uh, and you know, there's some drinking involved. You go out, you stay out late. So Zbiotics has been the perfect companion to bring along on that trip to have me waking up, feeling fresh, ready to go and do all the things that we have to do to produce this live show. Just remember to make Zbiotics your first drink of the night, drink responsibly, and you will feel your best tomorrow. And you know, Super Bowl Sunday is right around the corner. And because of Zbiotics, I'm confident that I'm going to be able to go out and enjoy this game without worrying about feeling productive on that Monday morning after the game. And if you go to zbiotics.com slash OPL, you can get 15% off your first order when you use the code OPL at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Just remember to head to zbiotics.com slash OPL. Use that code OPL at checkout and get 15% off Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and our good times. Are you looking to budget your food expenses this February? Well, you can save big and eat great with America's best value meal kit, and that is every plate. Honestly, it's the easiest way to eat affordably, and it's delicious, and you have a ton of options to choose from. They plan the meals and then they deliver pre-portioned ingredients right to your door so you don't have to spend all that time prepping and chopping and all the things that I'm terrible at and that a lot of people don't want to do when they're hungry and they just want to cook a meal. And you get to get rid of the worst part, which is going to the grocery store, which to me feels like a time waster. So that's why I love these pre-portioned ingredients and these meal kits. I love to be able to go through the menu uh, and each week have different meals arrive that I know are going to be super quick and easy for me to prep and cook and then also be delicious. And one thing that's important to me, every plate uses the highest quality ingredients. They use sustainably sourced seafood. These are things that I care about when I'm picking my meals and uh, the fact that every plate cares about it too is very important. And I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of meal kits out there. So I was a little skeptical. I never quite know if this is truly gonna save me the money that's promised. I definitely don't know if it's gonna be easy to prep and actually taste good because there's a lot of promises out there. But every plate, it checks all those boxes for me. It passed the test and that's why I continued using it. Uh, what they say about it is actually true. And I've saved so much time using it and I'm still enjoying a ton of new recipes. I look forward to trying new things. So I was 
pleasantly surprised and I'm going to keep using it. So you can get a meal starting at just a dollar and 49 cents plus one dollar steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering the code 49 OPL. The subscription must be active to qualify and redeem those dollar steaks, but that is an insane offer. Dollar steaks for life. Think just stop and think about that for a second. So get started with every plate again, starting at just a dollar 49 per meal. Plus you can get those dollar steaks for life. Just go to everyplate.com slash podcast and enter the code 49 OPL. The subscription must be active to qualify and redeem those dollar steaks. Uh, but this is not an offer that you want to miss out on. And it's up to a $110 value. So you're getting this cheap. And like I said, it's delicious. And uh, we thank Every Plate for sponsoring the podcast. And thank you, Every Plate, for uh, saving me so much time and filling my belly. So now that you are open about this, talking about it, have you run into people who just don't believe you and just cannot wrap their minds around this? Um, not anybody who said that to me, but like I said, I, I kind of, I feel like there are things about me and this is one of them where I even think myself, like, this is not believable. This does not sound like something that actually happened. And so I try my best to like prove stuff. And this is one that I just can't prove. So no one has ever told me they don't believe me, but I would not be surprised if there are people who don't, especially, you know, if they don't even know what synesthesia is, which is also, I mean, I didn't even know what it was. I was like 16 the first time I even heard about synesthesia and I didn't even put together. I, I want to say I was an undergrad when I was like, oh, maybe the tasting words thing is a form of synesthesia. And so I guess I don't, yeah, no one said it to me, but I wouldn't be surprised. What is synesthesia classified as, like, if it even is? Like, what do you call it? Like, I'm assuming it's not a disorder, but... Um, so when I looked up uh, the lexical gustatory synesthesia definition, like yesterday for this, which I've obviously looked at it before, but not in a while, it says neurological condition. Um, I, I honestly don't know what I would... I, Cause I don't, I don't say that. I don't say like, I have this neurological condition. Right. <laughs> um, I just call it synesthesia. And fortunately, you know, the few people that I've talked to in depth about this, um, they already have an idea of like what synesthesia is. Um, but, and I feel like I've made an example before, like, oh, it's kind of like this. And now I can't remember what I've said, like what I've compared it to. Um, but yeah, I guess technically Google says neurological condition. Hmm. Yeah. Do you see this as like a negative thing or a positive thing? Um, I think having a form of synesthesia is cool. So I would say that's positive. Um, as far as the actual experience, you know, I don't know anything else and I would, I, I try to be, especially with like anatomy and physiology, I feel like I'm a pretty logical person and I'm decently versed in it. And in my opinion, it's literally just like an association type thing, especially because of the fact that, you know, certain, um, like the food words taste like the food and like some words kind of correspond to the food that has a similar sound. Um, and so I really, I don't think of the actual thing as positive or negative. It's just kind of how it is. Um, and then there's other things. Like, for example, I haven't always had the healthiest relationship with food. And on one hand, I could think of that as like, well, it's because, you know, I crave these random things because of this, you know, cross wiring in my brain. But at the same time, I'm like, no, it's honestly probably the other way around. Probably all of my feelings and like my experiences in life, they would probably be essentially the same. It's, it's probably that that's causing, you know, like I, I like the way that these words taste because I like the food. I would probably mm. like the food anyway, yeah. even if I, you know, so sorry, that was kind of a convoluted answer, but I, I do think having synesthesia is cool. I think it's cool to be able to um, educate people on what it is because I think more people have some type of synesthesia than they realize. Like I said, people just don't know. They don't know that that's what it is. Or some people don't even know that not everyone experiences it. Like some people experience these things and they just think, oh, everybody sees colors when they hear their favorite song. Um, yeah, so it I'm, really I'm, comes I'm, down to awareness and people at some point in their lives coming across what this is or learning that someone else has it to even have it register that it's, like you said, something that not everyone experiences either way. It's kind of like that conversation yeah. where people are like, 
you know, we both acknowledge the color blue, but do you see blue the way that I see blue? And you're like, who knows? You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this was, yeah. it's similar also, I forget what it's called. We also did an episode a long time ago where some people don't have like an internal dialogue. Oh my gosh, and, yes. And, that, you know, that like, whole thing is crazy. You're not, like the way you talk to yourself in your head. Yeah. For some people that doesn't exist. And I forget the name. Yeah. And that is so mind blowing when people find out, regardless of which side they're on and which experience they have, where you yeah, can't even, like, you don't even know that that's, not normal or yeah. normal for other people. And I feel like synesthesia is like that. And it's just with awareness. And like even this episode, like I'm curious to see people commenting or saying, you know, whoa, I have that. Or I thought everyone experienced that. I Also, yeah. I, I, for you, I would be like, imagine the opposite of like, I'm talking and tasting nothing. It sounds so fucking boring. <laughs> like now yeah. I'm just, I feel bad for me. Yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, look, this sucks. I could be tasting something yeah, right we now. We just have food. You have food and well, words. The thing that's cool about that is I have, um, like for my husband and like for that, the one friend that I was like, you know, your ex-boyfriend's name sucks. Um, I have made people food before and been like, here, eat this. Like it might even be. So for example, um, sometimes I do kind of like the guy that I mentioned who would see colors when he would eat food and he would like, he would, I remember the, the one example that I remember is he would eat, um, like just plain chicken breast with vanilla ice cream because it made a really pretty like color combination. Wait, together? Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's And so I don't know if I do anything that weird, but like I, like, for example, I've put like, Oh, sorry. Like, so he, he ate that even though it made no sense because of the colors that that combination created for him to experience was so yeah. good for him that he was eating chicken and ice cream. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so I've done that, like not with chicken and ice cream, but like sriracha aioli on like plain toast. I, and that's kind of, it's not like the weirdest thing, but it's uncommon because, yeah. it, and so I'll, sometimes I'll have people try these little like weird combinations that I have and be like, you know, here, eat this, like chew it. And this is the word that corresponds just so they can kind of, like you were saying, since you guys don't taste anything when you talk, like just to kind of give people an idea of the experience and, mm -hmm. I don't know how well that works. That's kind of cool because you could also like preview these combinations before people try them. Be like, and just like <laughs> figure it out. Like the, yeah. the chicken and ice cream thing right now sounds absolutely fucking disgusting. But like, if you were like, no, I've tasted it and it's actually really good. And then it's like, all right, yeah. well, I guess we'll try it because you've had it before. Yeah. Even though you haven't had it before. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Can uh, we throw a few words at you? Because I'm curious what some certain words would be for you. Yeah, I honestly love doing that. I tell my husband to do it all the time. I'm like, ask me a word. <laughs> so yes, go ahead. Um, sex. Green bell peppers. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what was the red? I was actually- Respect. What? Respect and sex. Wow, okay. Oh. So, <laughs> mm. It might sound similar, but it is interesting because sex is like only green bell peppers and respect is like only red bell peppers. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. okay. What about umbrella? Um, it's like, like a, it's like a, the texture of a mushroom, but if it tasted like pineapple. Okay. Sorry. That's like, that's kind of a weird one. And I don't know why, but that's what it is. Oh, textures too. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Any other? That's well, and again, it's not, it's not that I can literally feel it, but it's, that's like what it is. Like that's what is okay. in my brain right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, murder. Murder is if you, so you know, if you like eat popcorn and you let the popcorn, like, like if you just like suck on it and let it get like really soggy, mm -hmm. that's what murder is. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. Whoa. That's so crazy that this is happening. Uh, I know. I'm teeth. trying to think of like strong words teeth. that like, oh, teeth. Wait, what did you say? Teeth. Oh, teeth is um, like very light tasting white chocolate. Like, the, you know, those, um, what are they called? The white rabbit Tootsie Roll things? Yes. If you guys ever had those, it's that. I didn't realize it would be so specific too. That's what's interesting. Yeah. Well, and not always, but yeah. the, the happens to be the stuff you're asking me. <laughs> what about the word synesthesia? Synesthesia honestly has like a very light flavor, like not much at all. It's kind of just like, um, like, like meat that would be on a charcuterie board. But very light, like almost like you just like put a piece of like salami or something in your mouth and like took it out. Oh, sounds beautiful. Yeah, it does. I actually love charcuterie, <laughs> so. <laughs> it's okay. Wow, this is so interesting. 
yeah. that like you could just fire them off and like you're just I know and that's honestly that's the only way and like I was doing this with my parents because obviously now they know and actually Greg one of the things in your book that I was really like resonated with was just the dedication to your parents because my parents are just like that like so supportive of every every random endeavor that I do and I was telling them about the show and um you know they so they know about it but they just were kind of firing some words at me and my mom was like see you can't make this up like you're doing and that's the only that's the best way that I feel like I can prove it if anyone ever thinks I'm like lying Mm -hmm. that's the closest I can get is yeah or else you're just like really skilled at improv and coming up with like (laughs) specific tootsie rolls and yeah (laughs) what about colors do they like kind of correspond to any sort of like if i say blue does that taste like anything that would be blue um honestly so colors are pretty much all candy and a lot of times it does it kind of corresponds almost to like the whatever colored gumball so blue sometimes blue just tastes like um like almost kind of plasticky, but it also like blue gumballs. That's a pretty close, like tastes like blue. Mm-hmm. Um, and then pink is also like, like pink tastes like pink gumballs. Purple isn't though. Purple tastes like, like roast duck. I don't know why. Roast um, duck. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Orange obviously tastes like orange, but that's more because of the food. So it tastes like an actual orange. Yeah. As we say um, these words, are you, are the, f- taste coming to you or is it just such like you've experienced it so much and you mentioned that you have a great memory that you are just able to kind of immediately remember or understand what the taste is um both but especially with colors i can really taste them like as you say them wow what (laughs) about god so it's guacamole which I, I wonder in my head if it's because, like, avocado kind of sounds, like, kind of like I was saying, avocado, like, with Santa like, it sounds guacamole. kind of similar, because the gato part of Santa Gato tastes like guacamole avocado, too. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it's because it sounds similar, but that's what it's always been. And like I said, I was raised Catholic, and I actually didn't even like avocados and guacamole when I was a little kid. So I'm not sure why that happened. Hmm. But yeah, it's, like, like very good guacamole, right. like the guacamole that my family makes. <laughs> God is Mexican. You heard it here first. <laughs> Awesome. Um, wow. So, okay. Do you, f- for you, did you mentioned connecting to people who have this or different forms of synesthesia? Was that important for you to kind of maybe find forums, communities, or other people? Is that something that helped get you out of the phase of keeping this to yourself and then talking openly about it and like having fun with it? Because you obviously went from a place where you, sort of shut it down because you felt weird and not normal, but now it seems like you're enjoying this and, you know, open to educating people. Yeah, definitely. So, um, as far as like having fun with it and talking to, like I said, you know, like posting about it on TikTok, and I have a lot of followers. So knowing that a lot of people are going to see that, um, it, that definitely was because of connecting with other people primarily on TikTok. Um, it's, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm part of any like groups about it though. So there's, I think three people that I talked to on TikTok and we're like mutuals. Um, and so definitely for that, but even before that, and you know, honestly, I'm probably not the best example of this because like I said, I just don't embarrass easily in general. So it's honestly surprising to me that I even was embarrassed about it for as long as I was. Um, but cause I, I did, I would say after I told my best friend when we were 18, you know, after her boyfriend broke up with her, I would say after that, I think I brought it up to my parents again, kind of after that, like, Oh, remember when I said this when I was four? And of course my mom didn't. And she was like, no, nobody remembers anything like that except for you. But I, that I was just kind of, you know, if, if it came up, I would tell people, or if there was a reason, you know, I wasn't hiding it, but I definitely didn't like, even at that time, I probably wouldn't have thought like, oh yeah, announce this to your 500,000 followers. Um, but it was just, once I saw that people were like, oh, that's cool. What does my name taste like? I was like, oh, I can do that also. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. What does Greg taste like? So Greg is an interesting one. Um, do you, I don't know if this is an actual thing or if this is just what my mom calls it. Is chicken breast bake something that you guys have heard of? It's like a casserole type thing. Chicken breast bake? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's know. like white, it's really, sim- it's a very like American it's, so it's chicken breast chipped beef, like the beef that comes dry in like a can strange. Um, and then it's like, just like a casserole sauce with like rice, but it tastes like that. But, um, this is also like a very niche thing. Um, it tastes like that, but it tastes like, um, 
so my dad was a firefighter my whole life, like for 25 years. And then he worked in the, he's retired now. But when you go to the fire station, there's like a very distinct, distinct smell, like kind of smoky, um, but it's just a very distinctive smell. And <laughs> the name Greg tastes like you're eating chicken breast bake in a fire station, like with that firehouse smell. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Cool. I'm yeah. going to have to experience that once in my life. <laughs> yeah, go, it's, yeah. Wow. You got to go eat chicken breast bacon in, in yeah. Alaskan <laughs> firehouse. <laughs> fire oh, yeah, that's true. I guess, Well, I mean, I've been to firehouses in other places, and I feel like it's pretty... I actually have been to one in New York City, and I feel like it's pretty similar, so it's, you probably just do it there. It sounds like but a mad lib. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're eating chicken, chicken breast bacon in Alaskan firehouse. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's really cool to hear. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, I think. <laughs> Yeah, Thanks, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just very, I don't, yeah, it's very unique. I don't know. Wow. Well. And a, a lot of times with names, it's more like one thing, but that one's like a more yeah. complex one. No, and it's cool. Like you said, that that's a cool kind of entryway for, you know, you to have fun with it, people to enjoy it, but then, you know, actually bring awareness and education to, to what this is and what you are experiencing. So, yeah, yeah. We, we really thank you for, for coming on. Um, really great explanation and definition of this. And I think, you know, we can at least understand it to the best of our ability now without experiencing it. So thank you for that. Uh, but before yeah. we go, um, you mentioned that you do post things on TikTok, you interact with people, uh, where can they find you if they want to see some of that content? Um, so my TikTok and Instagram are both killer queen Kathleen. So all one word and just spelled regular. So killer with a K, cute queen with a Q, killer queen Kathleen. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us today. Uh, we hope the conversation tasted good, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, thank you guys so much for having me. No problem. Uh, but yeah, good luck with everything and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You guys too. All right. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye. Man, I'm jealous. Yeah. I wish I could taste words. Yeah. What's better than food? You know what I'm saying? Or like tasting okay. things. Like I know. I know. I wish someone would taste like that oxtail from Tatiana. What a flex. Oh, you by didn't the go. Way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. It was really good. It's a restaurant. It's really Very good. inside baseball now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it sounds delicious. No, you he invited me. I couldn't go. Yeah, you couldn't uh, go. Anyway. I, that would be cool to experience, I think. I don't yeah. necessarily see the downside of it. I guess that initial point for her of, you know, like if you're young and you sort of realize this isn't the norm or what most people are going through, I could see that being an obstacle to overcome and kind of wrap your head around. It, it is interesting because it's like when you, when I say like mushroom to you, right, you can taste it. I mean, yeah, if we like, we're like if in that like, mindset and really thinking about it. You can like it, think about it. I can't for actually sure, because taste I've had it. mushrooms so many times. Right. So you can like think about like it. Like a dish or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can think about it. Yeah. You're like what it tastes like and what it like, what the texture is like. Yeah. But you can't, like, this is like another level of that. Yeah. So it's like, it's, damn, dude, that's fucking cool. It's, that's interesting. Um, It'd be so much easier to eat healthy. Uh, no, <laughs> not if the words, I mean, not if the food, wait, I don't know. Yeah. Wait, you why? Could, you could, I don't know. You just like <laughs> eat like a bunch of broccoli and then just like put maple syrup on it by like saying like the word picture a thousand times. Or something. I don't know if it works like that. <laughs> yeah. Right. While you're eating. Yeah. Right. It's like picture, 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 picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. You never know. That's funny. Um, interesting. I want to like research like synesthesia now, now that this is the second conversation, and that first one a while back, I remember being so cool and mind blowing for seeing sounds. And I wonder what else exists. Like what other yeah. experiences people are having where it's those senses getting crossed. I wonder if there is a, a version of this that both of us have, you know, mm. like independently, you have some form of synesthesia uh, for something. Like I'm, sh I'm sure, I mean, we've learned stuff about it. What was the thing that I have? Hmm? With the, the shit with noise where I'm like, I can't. Oh, misophonia? Misophonia. I have that for sure. Yeah, so and like we it's, discovered we think you do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely I definitely do. Mm -hmm. Because I, I I can't stand like a sound yeah. machine or something. Right. And without the awareness or, or 
like a title or definition like attached you to you don't that know thing. it's weird yeah you can't even like really comprehend that yeah so well really cool episode uh let, let us know in the comments if you guys also have some, some form of uh, synesthesia or if you have a very similar experience to her uh you can reach out to us if you want to be on the show uh the email is oplpodcast at gmail.com hit us up we'll get back to you yeah and follow us on instagram tiktok at opl podcast you can support at patreon.com slash opl show uh and if you have what she has let us know what we taste like because i want to redo i don't just want to be chicken in a firehouse (laughs) i want to see what else i taste like yeah uh we'll see you guys next time